not of yourselves yes. through works. So this prophecy reveals that Christ indeed died for you. Amen. That pardon is for you. That freedom from guilt is for you. And when Christ resurrected from the dead on that Sunday morning and ascended to the tabernacle above, there he lives for you. Amen. There he lives to give you and me grace and strength. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Christ was crucified exactly on time. Our Christian faith is not based merely on a warm feeling in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Our Christian faith is not based on some electrical impulse that goes up our spines. Our Christian faith is based on rock-solid evidence Amen. that Jesus is the Messiah. Now remember when Christ came? Look, Galatians 4, verse 4. I want you to see the text in the New Testament confirming Daniel's prophecy. When the fullness of time would come, God sent forth his son. Referring back to the fullness of time of Daniel's prophecy. Remember when Jesus was baptized in Mark chapter 1, the Bible says, verse 15, Christ is baptized, he comes up out of the water. What does he say? The time is fulfilled. What's he speaking about? The fulfillment of Daniel chapter 9. The fulfillment of that prophecy. He was baptized on time, crucified on time. Here, in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 6, the Apostle Paul recognizes that in due time, at the right time, Christ died exactly at the right time. He was the Passover lamb sacrificed for us, died for the ungodly. Now, Christ was baptized on time. Christ was crucified on time. Christ descended to heaven on time. Everything Jesus does is on time. Three and a half years from 27 AD, 31 AD, spring of the year, Christ dies. Three and a half more years, AD 34. Remember the Bible predicted there would be 490 years, 483, three and a half, three and a half, seven, 490. There would be 490 years. The Bible predicted that at this point something would happen and the gospel would go to the Gentiles. Stephen in 34 AD became the first Christian martyr. And as he spoke, he, he shared the prophecies of Christ the Messiah. The Jewish high priest rent his garments, indicating what we call a covenant lawsuit. When the high priest rent his garments, he was saying, I, we do not accept the covenant that Jesus came to establish. Satan's speech was Christ as the Messiah. The Jewish high priest rejected that in behalf of his nation. And as the result of that, he rejected the reasoning that Jesus was the Messiah. And at that point, the gospel went out to the Gentiles. Now, of course, the Jews and Gentiles together accepted the gospel. But this was precisely in 34 AD, exactly as the Bible predicted. But wait a minute. The 490 years were just part of the longer prophecy of the 2300. God gives us something in time as an anchor point. 27 AD, Christ baptized on time. That's an anchor point. We see that historically. Christ crucified on time, 31 AD, when he's 33. That's an anchor point. We see that. Christ allowing the gospel to go to the Gentiles, 34 AD. That's an anchor point. So the first part of the prophecy relates to the first coming of Jesus. The second part of the prophecy relates to the second coming of Jesus. Daniel 9, 24 says, 70 weeks, 490 years are determined for your people and your holy city. The first 490 years are part one. But there are 1,810 years left in part two. So where do these take us? If this ends in 34 AD and you have 1,810 years left, that would take you down to 1844 AD. What's the significance of 1844? The significance is this. Based on the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation, Jesus now is in a special phase of his ministry. It is now no longer business as usual. Now no longer pleasures as usual. Now the human race is living in a period of time that the Bible calls the judgment hour. This is why Revelation says, the hour of God's judgment, what everybody? Has come. This is a time to be on our knees seeking God. This is a time for us to ask God, reveal to me all of your truth, God. Many churches teach part of the truth, 
But we're in the judgment hour where the full revelation of God's truth is to go to all humanity. What's the significance of 1844? Since 1844, everything has speeded up in the world. Since 1844, we're living in a time where there's more violence, more crime, more immorality, more earthquakes, more famines, more fires, more floods. In the 19th century, we're living in a time of the explosion of knowledge, where the gospel is going out, radio, television, internet. We are living at a time, remember what the angel said in the message? It says, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. We're living in the judgment hour. Things are wrapping up in this earth's history. And so God is sending the gospel around the world very, very rapidly. Daniel 8.14 says, in two, Unto 2,300 days, at the end of the 2,300 years, after 1844, the sanctuary in heaven will be cleansed. What's that talking about? It's talking about God setting everything right. It's talking about God moving to destroy all evil. Since 1844, we've been living in God's judgment hour. That's why Revelation says, fear God, respect Him. Now is the time in all of your life to give glory to Him because the hour of God's judgment has come. You know, when you think of judgment, how many of you look forward to going before the judge? You say, I just can't wait to go before the judge. That's going to be a really an exciting moment when I go before the judge. If you've ever been called before the judge, your knees are knocking, your hands are shaking, you're sweating. You say, oh man, my name is going to be called now. You stay there in that court an hour, two hours, three hours, and finally your name is called and you say, please have mercy. In Hebrew, the judge was not one that condemned you. In all of Hebrew thought, there's a different idea about the judge. The judge is the one who's on your side. The judge is the one that's going to set all things right. The judge in Hebrew thought is the one that is going to try to prove your innocence. And here is the incredible good news. Jesus. Remember what Jesus said? The Father judges no man, but he gives all judgment to his Son. Jesus is our judge, but Jesus, according to the Bible, is also our attorney. Jesus is the one that comes and stands before us, and stands before God. And Satan comes, and he, Satan says, look at the sins they have done. Look at their lies. Look at their immorality. Look at their greed. Look at their selfishness. And Jesus steps forth in the great judgment of the universe. And Jesus says, this man is one of mine. Yes, they had imperfection, but they came kneeling, confessing their sin. They came with brokenhearted repentance. Satan, be gone. Amen. Satan, be gone. Because this man, this woman, is one of mine. When you and I come to Christ, when we recognize that we're living in unique hours of earth's history, when we recognize that the sands of time are running out in the hourglass of time, when we come to Jesus on our knees and say, God, anything in my life that's not right, take it away. Any attitude in my brain that's not right, take it away. Any habits in my life that are not right, take them away. Lord, we're living in the judgment. Lord, you're about ready to come. Lord, I want my heart right with you. Jesus says, Calvary Amen. is for you. Amen. The cross is for you. Grace Amen. is for you. What is grace? Grace is God's loving pardon to forgive us and his divine power to change us. Amen. Grace is so good that it not only forgives us, it changes us. Amen. Amen. Calvary's love. Calvary's love. Would you like to reach out right now and say, Jesus, I want you to pardon me, but I want you to do more than that. I want you to change me. Amen. I want you to forgive me, but I want you to do more than that. I want you to make me a new man, a new woman. I want you to come right down deep inside and change me. And God, in this final judgment hour of earth's history, 
I want to know you. I want to know your truth. That whatever you want me to do, I want to do it. Amen. Listen as Charles sings, Calvary's love.